What's up everybody, it's McCollum Productions. Today we're gonna to talk about Medgar Evers. So I first learned about Medgar Evers a couple months ago. I was watching a movie they made about him back in the 90s and uh, I found him interesting from just watching that movie. I instantly started studying up on learning more about the guy. So Medgar Evers was born in 1925 in Decatur, Mississippi. He joined the army in 1943 and he went off to fight in the European theater of World War II. And while he is there, he fought in the Battle of Normandy, Normandy on the beaches in France. So when he came back, he tried to vote in a local election and him and five other black men he was with, they ended up getting chased out with guns. He went to Alcorn State University in the Mississippi Delta. When he was there, he met his wife, Merle. He played football and he ran track and he was also on the debate team. He was involved with the student government at Alcorn State. Once he got out of college, he moved to Mount Bayou, and that's where he kind of began his activism. So, like, what Mount Bayou was, was in the early 1900s, this was an all-black town. All the farmers were black, the store owners were black. It was, like, the first black separate city in the country where it was only black people. Black people ran the city. Black people were the mayors. They were the law enforcement. They were the business owners. Everything. It was like a safe haven for other blacks in the Delta. So while he was there in Mount Bayou, he organized a boycott of gas stations in the area that didn't allow blacks to use the bathroom. Later on, Evers applied to the at the time segregated University of Mississippi. He was going to go to law school there, but he got denied. So later on, he was involved with the integration progress of that same school. He was the NAACP's first field officer in Mississippi. He worked as part of the Emmett Till investigation, and that's where he really became well known. He organized the boycott of all the white merchants in Jackson, and in 1963, a Molotov cocktail was thrown at his house and hit his carport and caught his carport on fire or whatever. And just five days before his assassination, he was leaving. Uh, office in downtown Jackson and a car actually tried to run him over. He knew that his death was coming soon and he told his wife Merle this and he knew he wasn't going to be around much longer because a lot of people were really wanting him dead. So the same day JFK made a speech supporting the civil rights movement, Mega was shot in his driveway and so from what I learned in an interview with his wife, she had said that when he had pulled him a carport he had always open the passenger door and get out of that side because there's an empty lot um, across the street and to, to the side. So they thought that that lot would be a good place for somebody to hide out if it was planning on killing Medgar. So he would get out on the other side, but this time I he was ready to get home or he was excited about getting home and something had happened, but he ended up getting out the driver's side. Medgar got out and as he was shutting the door, he got shot in the back and he ended up crawling about 30 feet to his doorstep and that's where he died at. On June 23rd, a man named Byron De La Beckwith, he was a fertilizer salesman and he was a member of the KKK, was arrested for Medgar's murder. De La Beckwith was visited by the former governor while he was awaiting trial and an all-white jury ended up not convicting Beckwith of the murder even after all of his evidence had been proven. Actually his gun was found. He had laid his gun down at the scene of a crime. In 1994 Beckwith was brought back to trial though. Megger's body was exhumed and they was actually surprised at how good a condition his body was still in after being buried all these years. And Beckwith was actually convicted this time and he was sentenced to Whatever his uh, sentence was, I actually didn't find that part. But he was sentenced, and he actually died in prison in 2001. Merle fought for years there. Beckwith convicted. And Merle actually ended up becoming the chairman of the NAACP. His brother Charles is also a major civil rights leader. and He remained involved with the civil rights movement pretty much his entire life. He's still alive to this day. I just wanted to share it with you guys. And so, like, comment, and subscribe.